Our main character is a freeloader, doesn't really have any ambition, plays games all day, is suddenly transported into a city, a town, without people. It's much like his town, but, you know, there's no one there. Now, at night, the people who are transported there gathers in certain buildings, structures that are called games. And within those games, the players, which is Alice, has to play in it in order to live. They have to earn something called a visa, where they are given a day to live. If they run out of days, a laser shoots down and kills them. This is the review for the Japanese drama, Alice in Borderland. Coming into the series, my first impression was it was interesting. When I first read the summary, I immediately thought of Battle Royale. Battle Royale is a movie released in the 2000s, which was based on a novel. It's about a group of students who are put together to test to try to kill each other and win the game. I love that novel and movie, and I immediately thought of that same genre when I was watching Alice in Borderland. The first episode of Alice in Borderland, we see Arisu and his friends come into the scene and explain a bit about their lives. The focus was Alice and the fact that he is a neat or someone who doesn't really have any purpose or ambitions in life. After that, we see them toying around and playing around and then suddenly they get transported into a different world. At first, they were confused of what was going on. Everyone is missing, yet the food, everything else that they have, clothes, everything else, things, objects are still there. Like people were just removed out of space and the things that they left behind are still there. When you get into the game, at first look, there's cramped spaces, there's weird phones, there's walls, and there's all of these choices and time limit for them to try and survive, make a choice, and if not, they die. All of these pressures gaining up on them and the fact that everything is a mystery and you know the fear itself, it's just a lot of those factors that push these characters to different choices, making different choices and making the right choice, hopefully, to survive. And there's this other girl that comes in and and knows a lot of different things and there's this new other girl it's really confusing and at the same time a lot of mess but i loved it i love the pressure that the characters went through to get over that game to get over that hurdle what made me stay in alice in borderland was the fact that every episode was different every plot and twist is different for each in episodes and it keeps on moving forward it reminded me much of Games of Thrones because of how they tackle with the characters. You never know who's gonna die. You never know who's gonna be surviving. And the guy that you thought would survive will automatically be there and it suddenly twists around and you're like, oh my gosh, that's really messed up, but it was good, it was entertaining. Regarding the games, each game in Alice in Borderland is divided into four different types, mainly hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. Each game is different from the other, where one game type would be something about doing something physical, the other something about the players turning on each other, and the other having teams defeating a sort of entity or a different enemy. So at that point, it's really different for each kind of game, and then the level it has is also different. The game itself of Alice in Borderland plays on the emotions, the, the intensity, the mental stress, the emotional stress of all the players in, you know, trying to twist them into doing something they're not really used to doing. And I like that sociological, psychological attack against the players and I like how they react and it's really very entertaining. Let's go into the main character, Arisu or Alice. He's the type of guy who doesn't really have any ambition. He spends most of his day and nights inside his house, inside his room, playing games to all of his content. 
All of the things that he does is centered around being lazy or staying inside the home and just playing games. Even his family, his brother and father, try to push him and get him a job. He doesn't necessarily follow up on them and try his best to attain one. He's just inside his home and is cooped up and plays games. Now, when the games of life and death suddenly start, we see Alice being thrown into it with no preparation whatsoever. But because of the factors involved in, he somehow figures out that whatever makes up the game, whatever is going on, the, the rules, everything else that the factors that make the game work, he figures all of them out and finally arrives to a decision. He keeps on doing that again and again in different scenarios of different games, no matter what the type it is. Now let's talk about Addis's friends. These two people came along with him in the other world when they were both stuck in the bathroom. Specifically, Chota and Karume. Chota is the type of guy who doesn't really have any use in the game. Though he is technically smart in IT and technical details like gadgets and stuff like that, he's not really particularly useful in the games because of the nature of each type of game, where there are street smarts, social smarts, and physical endurance, and all of these things that Chota doesn't really have. Though Chota appears to be useless in the first episode, he redeems himself by stopping Shibuki from interfering between Karube and Arisu when they were fighting. That in itself was being true to his relationships to himself about his friendships and being that kind of person where they can rely on him even though he had an affair with Shibuki which was funny for Shibuki and kind of really different for the dynamics of how the two actually work. Since we're talking about Shibuki, at the first couple of episodes of Alice in Borderland there was a notion that she was somehow friendly with all the group and she was just trying to get by like they are and she doesn't really have any threat or has any malice towards the group but with all of his or uh, her backstory about using her former boss and then sleeping with the chota and all of these factors came in it was very obvious at the start even when she appeared at the room of choices that she's gonna use these guys to get ahead and i didn't really know why the guys didn't see that especially karube maybe karube doesn't really think that much but for aris aris himself like that sort of doubtfulness i guess for the characters, they're not really at that point where they can be very doubtful about each other or the person that they're with. So she kind of slipped her way in like a snake and I guess that's a good way. I don't know if I really enjoyed that part of part a bit for her scene, but I understood why it happened. So you may like it, you may not. So now let's talk about Karube. Karube is that guy who uses his body before he ever thinks about what he's gonna do. He's very quick to decide by using his muscles, his arms, his will, and he's not really a thinker type of guy. He's more of a doer. If he can do it, if he can punch his way through it, kick his way through it, he's gonna do it. I like that kind of guy that type of person because it balances out where Arisu is more of the street smarts game smarts um chota is the useless technician kind of guy and there's this guy who uses his bronze i get that and i like that but what i didn't really like was the fact that at the first episodes we are introduced with karube sleeping with her i mean his boss's wife i believe or girlfriend I don't like that point because we were introduced like it was just a, a casual thing like it was going on in the side nothing really that serious and then in the middle we see a glimpse of him having an engagement box with a ring inside and he was going to propose to that same girl but they already broke up and it's a really confusing relationship that they have and 
I immediately thought the impression that I got was the fact that it was only casual. Now he has this, you know, aspiring need, a dream of his to be with this girl in the future and make, you know, a family. It's just, it's weird. It's weird that that is his motivator, especially towards the end of episode four, I believe, where all of them were kind of in a tough situation in a game and they had to turn on each other. What I'm gonna say is a major spoiler in that that all of Arisu's friend actually died in a game of hearts. Now, this is necessary for me to say is because there is a point of change in Arisu when he encounters this. This is the point where the main character actually evolves and tries to be different, tries to change himself in order to survive. And I like this point in the story because if his friends never died, he's never going to be able to be independent. He's never going to be able to find a reason to live. And he's never going to be able to change into a better person where he relies on himself and tries to figure out everything else by doing it on his own striving. I like the point of change of what happened that his friends died and Arisu needs to grow up. What I didn't like was the change that Arisu went with. Throughout the story, we see him being more of a pacifist in trying to be an idealistic person to get everyone involved through the game and out of the game as a whole and nobody dies. That's the point of his take with what happened when his friends died. He wants everyone to survive and he wants everyone to get through the story, through get through the games with, you know, living and breathing and everyone is okay. I get that. But throughout his idealistic and pacifistic nature that has evolved, we see him being beaten down by other people, being threatened, being abused, and all of these bad things happening to him, and he doesn't really react. He doesn't fight back. Although I get it that he wants everyone to survive and everything else, but it sacrifices himself. He, he is abused, he is beaten down, he's punched, he's kicked, and I don't like that fact. I wanted him to fight back. I wanted him to be mad, be stronger, be push them, push these enemies away. And I want him to do that, but we never get to see him do that because somewhere down the line, he evolves into a pacifistic nature and I didn't like that change. Although I get it, it's very subjective of me to say that I didn't like that point, but there was something about the nature of the games, people dying, people, always pushing each other around him being a hearts guy a guy that actually is good at playing hearts game that point that all those factors when you think about it it makes me think it makes me want to believe that arisu would actually fight back with a bat with a gun and just you know be a better man be a stronger man who actually pushes back and not just accept everything and be idealistic in nature. Because if he keeps on being idealistic, I don't know, everyone might actually die. He's not a hero. I hope he understood the fact that he is not a hero and he cannot just save everyone and feel like everyone will come along. He doesn't have superpowers and I wish he would realize that. Maybe in season two, I don't know. I know this is highly subjective, but yeah, that's how I, looked at it and that's what I thought. The other main character of the story is Osagi. Osagi is a very athletic girl who's a climber, who doesn't really have any much connections in the outside world, who appears to be like that. And her only connection in the outside world was her father who has apparently died. All of these things make her into a strong individual because she doesn't have any attachments whatsoever and she just strives to always be better, be best and try to make it through the games and get more visas and get to be on top and win it. I like Osagi that the fact that she is a survivor, she is camping, she is cooking, she's doing everything to survive by herself and she doesn't really have any emotional attachments to people but she still tries. I like that sort of attitude. 
What I really didn't really like about the character was the fact that there wasn't really anything much, a backstory, a history, more to do with her. Maybe we'll get that more in season two. It's just a need for me to know more about the character. We learned a lot about Arisu and the other characters in the story, but not much towards her. She's very important in the story with how she is sided with Arisu from the start and how she attacks all of the games head on. And I wish there was more about her. Let's go to the villains of the story. We have Chishia, who at the start appears to be sly. I do like how he is presented in the story with the white hair and how his getup is. It's very different and stands out. And you know that this guy is up to no good or maybe he's very smart and sly and all of these things. He appeared to be good at the start with Arisa, then does something twisted and it's kind of okay. I wish he had more slyness, he had more cunning in the way he executed all of these different things, different events that happened. I wish he was smarter, two steps smarter, three steps, I don't know. But the way that I envisioned him, hopefully, when I was watching a first cut, a first scene of him, was someone like Dexter Morgan or something else. Like something, someone really sly, but I never see him do anything like that. Now we have Nuragi. He's this twisted guy who is very crazy, says what he wants, and doesn't really have any rational thinking in the way he does things. He usually just offs people's heads and stabs them or guns them down. And I get that type of character. But what I didn't really like was the fact that he wasn't really as good of an actor. I don't know. I'm not really as sold with the type of character he's portraying. I get that the character is supposed to be crazy, he's supposed to run mad, run crazy, kill people. And I love that kind of character. But the way he portrayed it, I wasn't as sold and I wasn't as, you know, hating on the character. I need to hate and dislike him at the same time, but I really didn't feel anything about him. And he's just that character who does what he wants and it's like, Okay. With Niragi being a meh kind of character, I felt the same thing around the beach members. I don't know if they're supposed to be helping, or they're supposed to be hating, because of the fact that I think Alice in Borderland was built for characters to survive on their own or with each other's help. Like you don't know what kind of character or what kind of person that that person wants in that setup or needs in that moment that as a viewer you don't really get to see who's the villain who's the antagonist who's the protagonist who's going to help the protagonist and it's just a lot of crazy things that you don't know which side they're going to be and that felt strongly in the beach members like these the number one the number two mad hatter um all of these pillar characters they're just they don't really have a set goal and you know that everyone wants to get out that's the whole goal but they're motivators itself it just it doesn't appear as black and white when you're watching it so as a person as a viewer you don't really get to connect with them on that level you don't hate them or love them it's just towards in the middle and I wish Alice in Borderland had gotten to a point where they fleshed out the characters better for us to hate them or love them. It just didn't happen. I believe it's because it's the short amount of episodes and the way the story is mostly plot driven and not character driven. Though we get a lot of backstories, we don't see them evolve. The characters change or situations turn them into someone different. Because we have a big cast, turns out that we don't really have enough time for each and every character and that sucks. I give Alice in Borderland a 5 out of 5. There's a lot of story, plot twists, character storylines, a whole bunch of cast that has really different motivators, different backstories. There's a lot of twists and plot stories. Even the, the, the games itself are really interesting. So it made me want to press ahead and play and it really rose my heart and I was like at the edge of my seat asking what's gonna happen. 
and it was actually kind of stressful at times because you're like oh no someone's gonna die my favorite character is gonna die and i love that and it was very entertaining like i've said earlier there's a whole bunch of cast and not as necessarily fleshed out characters but we do get to see a little bit of their backstories and i like that because it's a diverse cast and you see there's villains, there's there's protagonists and antagonists, good versus evil. And at the same time, they're not really good, they're not really evil. There's a lot of gray lines crossing in between and they're only trying to survive. And they're just people whose ideas of how to survive clash against each other. And I like that. Another good character of the story is Koina. I like her fight scene with the last boss and both of their characters are finally given a backstory. Last Boss is a guy who is very different from who he appears to be now, and then Quina, so much different as well. It's like the transformation of these characters was just so different, so polarizing. Like the fact that they were that person, and then when they came into this, this weird game they're actually different especially with last boss but then again with queen up it's it's more of a transformation because of what she was before i don't want to spoil it but i really like the way that these two characters just fought on each other fought each other and then they changed and then it was good it was really nice and it was pleasantly surprising for both of the reveal and the fact that who won when these two characters fought like i've said earlier i like how the game types are it changes from each suit of card and the fact that the dif difficulty rises up i like the fact that they have to fight each other they have to get along with each other they have to do it on their own like all of the different instances that may happen in a game, different types of a game, it makes the whole drama much more interesting, much more exciting, and it's really fun to watch. It's not all about killing, it's not all about blood, it's not all about violence. At episode 6, we get to see a party, an actual party, a luau, a rave, whatever you want to call it. All of these party just go along and there's drugs there's sex there's a lot of things going on loud music and it was such a welcome break from all the hacking and slashing and the guns and it's nice that the characters get to have a break as well and you see them all in beach attire and i like that sort of take of of how the story is going we get to have a sort of break before the whole carnage starts again. Just because this is a five out of five review doesn't mean there are things that I didn't like about the story. And that one thing as well is the fact that Arasu and his character evolution. I wished him more to be a survivor rather than a pacifist. At that point, I understood the fact that he's not going to be anything else he's just a pacifist but there's a scene where he is uh, captured and a group of his friends try to save him now at that point where these guys are trying to save him there are obstacles and other enemies that try to gun them down there were plenty of opportunities for them to steal a gun get a knife or do something violent against the enemies but they never do that I get that Alice is actually a pacifist, but it doesn't mean the other guys are as well. They have been in, in the borderland for like days, weeks, and months, but they never tried to actually be violent. That's kind of really twisted because we never get to see these people, their backstories for them to, for, the, for us to realize that they are pacifists. My recommendation is definitely watch it. It consists of eight episodes, so it's easy to binge watch. My suggestion is to actually not binge watch it because there's a lot of high adrenaline, gore, violence, and blood that goes on into the story. So take your time and actually watch maybe two episodes preceding and maybe do again after a couple of days or a week and just enjoy it. It's very fun and it's very stressful to watch. So take your time and try to go through it really on a good pace. 
Also, it reminded me of Hunger Games and Maze Runner with how the sci-fi and how the games are set up. It's really kind of like those movies or those novels. So if you do enjoy those, you might actually get to enjoy Alice in Borderland. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, do give me a like. If you want to see more reviews on Asian drama TV series and films in the future, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and that bell button for notifications. Our word for the day is NEAT, where it stands as not in employment, education, or training. This is what the people in Alice in Borderland tell or refer Alice as because he's just a freeloader. That's it.